Yeah, I've been uh, trying to get on the PGA Tour, playing mini tour events and uh, qualifiers and Q School and uh, trying to play full-time golf, but you know, I like to have fun playing softball too. Uh, how old are you and how big are you? 42 years old, uh, six feet, 172 pounds. One thing interesting I think is the similarities between golf and your game here. You had a great body angle when you came, you had a good stride, a nice rotation, so super job in the rotation, but your swing was straight up, almost like you're trying to golf everything else up. Yeah. And anyhow, the changes we make were what for you that made the biggest difference? Yeah, well in golf, uh, you know, the, the motion's kind of down and up, but in, in softball, I'm trying to set my angle early and rotate within that angle and just have a hard over snap here rather than get the golfing motion like this. So for me, I set my rotation, rotate, and then a hard right hand over snap uh, has been the big changes for me. With Tyler's swing, we see the very common now come up and an upper snap golfing. Hitters feel like they have to try to hit the ball up in the air. With Brett, you can see using the great visual of the guide rope and the ball on the rope, you can see there's a lag and a snap, a stab within the rotation of the hips, and then the following snap. That's what we had to work on with Tyler. We use a bungee cord on the end of the bat so the hips can take a full drive open and pull open, but we create a real short stab. Then we went to the Venable slide tube where we can develop a nice path. But watch, he was still loopy, wanted to drag ahead. Even at the end, he got shorter, better point of contact, but there's still a tendency for muscle memory to make that drive of that knob come up. We wanted the drive of the knob to immediately follow into the snap. The lag into the snap, it's really one motion. It's about a 40 for a second, but you can still see Tyler was up, and here on my swing and on Brett's, you'll see the knob goes inside and down, and the bat head whips through like a punt boxer's punch, a power punch. There's a lag flowing immediately into a snap, and that only takes about a 40 for a second. Not up, not a, not a uppercut, but palm down like you're punching. So here, like a boxer's uppercut, that's a wrong tendency to think about the swing. Think more of that bat head punching and driving the ball, getting much more on a level plane. So Tyler used the new drill, which is the power punch drill. And again, the power punch drill drives the knob down, and like a boxer's power punch, it drives a bat head past. And that resonated, made all the difference in the world, took him from working hard on the other drills, but this made him get a much more level swing, getting the knob level, the power punch, is a dramatic, shows you the dramatic difference between an uppercut swing and a more level cutting swing. Gives you a better bat plane and it just made all the difference in the world for Tyler. Starting it off the tee, there's immediately more level, dramatically difference in distance and exit speed. They're just almost a perfect swing, able to drive the ball and is able to cut through the top or bottom. Again, there's a lag that flows into the snap, all done so fast, too fast to analyze, but something can certainly drill to get it down. We went to the live hitting, even on low balls, he didn't want to golf them up. He had a tendency to drive them right away off the tee. Again, phenomenal for hitting distance and for hitting line drives. And off the live, he flowed right into it, able to cut through the middle or bottom of the ball, depending on what kind of spin he wanted. Again, that knob is going to drive inside and down, so you get a good power snap. And you're able to not lift the ball, but more to drive it off your hip rotation. So uh, my goal coming in, working with uh, Bogey, is to get some more power. Well, yesterday uh, I hit about five or six out here at Woodlawn, and uh, probably the longest of that was around 350. So uh, that's that's great power for me. And I'm sure the softball breaks the the stress and the monotony sometimes of a practice and golf all the time. Oh yeah, it's good to get together with your friends, and it's good to play a team sport. Golf's very individual, so it's uh, it's great to have some fun with the guys. It's nice to be on a team sport. We could you can blame somebody right. else if things get screwed up. Not yourself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, good luck uh, with the career and great job on the lesson. Thanks, Bo. Yeah, I'm using the De Marini Flipper Aftermath at home, and uh, the sweet spot's great. It has a lot of pop. Uh, gives you a lot of forgiveness, and when you hit it, it's going to go far. Tonight on the Bear Atchler, the women are looking for love, but Bear thinks he's selecting a batting practice partner. Is confusion a mayhem for all? Let's see if Bear gives out a bat to a lucky lady. 
Alright, so we have the group date and Bear asked the ladies to go play in his co-ed softball team and I thought it would be a marvelous date, but Trisha didn't turn out so well. Well, I thought it was sexy, so I invited him to go swinging after the game. And Bear? Well, <laughs> yeah, swinging. I show up. She's, got, she's all dressed in the nines and the tens. Man, she's got high heels on. She's got shorty skirt oh my god how the hell can you go to a batting cage like that oh what an idiot i guess there's a little misunderstanding but anyhow um thank you for appearing on the show and sorry you had to be sent home so soon so i don't get the bat you don't get the bat for all you young fellas out there looking for love get yourself a larry carter d marini instead more forgiving a lot better looking and a heck of a lot easier to find a sweet spot